I was about to wash his hair, and it like slid out of my hand and onto his eyelid. Oh. Yeah, it just fell onto his eye. That's how my day started. Soap in the baby's eye? Yeah. It happens. And our fridge is broken, so we're getting ice. And we're cleaning the fridge. Good times. What did we lose anything? A bunch of milk, but Just not milk. breast milk. We went to the neighbors and they saved us. That's what neighbors are for. <laughs> Borrowing sugar and breast milk. Benjamin, say hi to the vlog. Say hi to the people. Um, say hello. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just chilling with my daddy on the couch. <laughs> Mommy and sister are playing Monopoly. For about the 18th time in the last 48 hours. And how many times have I won? Once. <laughs> you said he's gonna start a, a growth spurt, or what'd you say? What is a mental name? leap. Oh. There are these things called leaps, according to the Wonder Weeks app. And he just finished his second leap, like, last week. And he's been so pleasant for the past week. But he might be starting his third one soon, which makes him clingier apparently, and fuzzier, but it's good because he's getting mental development, and he's on track for it, so, yay. Yay for mental development. Give me a high five. Not quite there yet. Just slap me in the face. Okay. Close enough. Violence is not the answer. Stop hitting your daddy in the mouth. Getting pretty good with your right hand, man. Getting pretty good with your right hand. I can't defend myself. I can't. This is the swaddle. The baby straight jacket. It's supposed to recreate the the womb. That way you feel like you're all cozy and getting hugged from every direction. Just like when you were in your mommy's uterus. This way you can't punch the daddy. And you're napping, you can't punch the daddy, can you? Can you? Okay, let's see. How which way does this go? I do the left side first, and then the right side last. And then we tuck it in. And hopefully you don't blast your diaper. Did daddy do a good job? <clears throat> The final product, if you do it correctly, should have a baby burrito. It's a place that shares facilities with the post office. That's weird. Just picked up these huge, or one huge pizza and one reasonably sized pizza for dinner. That a deal where you get a gigantic pizza and you get a medium one for free. So, let's check it out. It smells delicious. I think I'll definitely eat a slice as I drive. Because I can't wait. I have no patience. As per usual, I'm driving listening to a podcast. Uh, today's episode is Joe Rogan. I'm listening to him conversate with Mike Schmidt, who is a stand-up comic, but he used to be an attorney out in Wisconsin. He was a criminal defense attorney, and he's he's kind of he's kind of blown uh, the whistle on the justice system, which I already knew, and I think most people already know that if you're black, if you're brown skin you do not get equal treatment under the law. If you are Caucasian, here's an example that he gave. The most common offense is a B&E, a break and entering, uh, a robbery. Late teens, early 20s, male. The white kids basically get slap on the wrist, uh, probation, and then they have the opportunity to get that offense expunged once they reach a certain age. Same exact scenario, except the suspect is black, straight to prison for years, 
basically life is ruined. You're not getting a job. You're not getting a higher education. You're probably not getting your freedom back. You're just going to keep matriculating in and out of the system. And he couldn't. He couldn't take it. That was just one example of inequality in the system. Another. But yeah, just to hear it from the horse's mouth, from a Caucasian, from a former attorney who saw the system from the inside and knows the terrible treatment that minorities get in the justice system. You know, if you got if you got money, you can buy your way out of a sticky situation. You know, the the bail the way the whole bail bond system is set up. Uh, you're screwed if you're poor. Uh, I got some of this information on John Oliver, too. He does a great job of exposing corrupt interworkings of our system. The public defenders. I could go on and on. But basically, right now, I'm driving while black, and I've got an electronics device in my hand. It's not a phone. I'm not talking on the phone. Uh, I've got my hands free, but still, I think about these things. You know, it's... A lot of people like to play video games, they like to play Grand Theft Auto. They like a little excitement at the end of their day. I just like to make it home without getting pulled over and without getting my... my rights dismantled. That's exciting for me. I have my windows tinted, if you could see, slightly tinted. Um, ne near the legal limit for the tent amount. And the reason I got it, I gotta tell you, it's not, not for the heat. It's not for the look. It's to make it difficult to see what my race is when I'm on the road. I have my windows tinted so the cops cannot tell that I'm black at a quick glance. And I've gotten one fix-it ticket for my for my tent, but it was worth it because I don't know how many stops I avoided, profiling stops that I avoided by having my tent. So yeah, the harsh realities of living in this in this place we call America. Y'all had a happy 4th of July. Peace. Super busy at the Toyota dealership right now. I'm getting service or a test for oil consumption because my car eats oil like a freaking hog. And uh, hopefully I'll be getting an uh, engine rebuild if the test comes back negative or positive, depending on how you look at it. Basically, there was a recall on uh, Camry's 2006 to 2009, I believe that uh, it's consuming too much oil. And Toyota was hit with a class action lawsuit. And I'm sure most of you guys have seen Fight Club, but you know how corporate insurance uh, warranty issues work if it's cheaper to do the recall versus cheaper to um, do nothing, you know, based on their bean counting. And that's what they do. Um, so I happen to hear about this. I've been putting extra oil in my engine between oil changes for as long as I can remember. So it's cost me hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars, and they're going to look at it, and if it uh, passes the test, basically they're going to put um, something on there to monitor how much oil gets consumed. I'm going to drive for 1,300 miles, bring it back. If it passes, then they'll, then they'll do the repairs. Um, which is fine. They're doing their, their due diligence, I suppose. But what frustrates me is I'm due for an oil change. And they're like, oh yeah, it's going to be $45 for oil change. But they're going to you know, top it off at a courtesy quart of oil. This doesn't make sense. It's poor, poor customer service. You know, if I've been putting hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of oil in my car for the last years. I think you could do me a solid and throw me a, a filter. You know. I had to go get coffee because I'm still waiting for my car. Two hours later. 
car dealership coffee is not very tasty, but it still has caffeine, so whatever. It's the first time I've ever seen a Brinks truck guy leave empty handed. I want to know who's coming in and buying their RAV4 with cash. That's what I want to know. Finally got my car finished. I'm charging with the oil change, which I'm not happy about. Green drink. I gotta have my green drink. It's my fuel, my fuel source. Sometimes they're on sale, sometimes they're not. Let's see what we got. Two for six bucks. Ugh, these are the Uber greens. I much prefer the noon greens or the green delight. But take what we can get. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. I forgot to use my Vons Club card, so I paid an extra dollar for my green drink. This should normally, well it's on sale for three dollars, if you put in your Vons Club. So I paid about four dollars for this, which is not a terrible deal, but the cute girl, the cashier, she distracted me. heard about the Alton Sterling murder out in Louisiana. Another black man killed by the police. It feels it feels like one a week now. It feels like it's that it's that often. Um, I'm not gonna do the, the normal social media back and forth one community saying that it's wrong, the police need to be held accountable, excessive force, while another community is saying, you don't know how hard it is to be a cop, you don't know the circumstances, just follow the law and you have nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna engage in that discourse because it's exhausting. I don't know the details, I did see a very short video clip on YouTube of the incident. It appeared to me that he was subdued. He was on the ground with two officers on him. His arms were pinned at his side in the parking structure and he was shot point blank in his heart. That is what I saw. Um, It's unbelievable, you know, it's, I don't know, I feel almost numb to it because of the frequency, but the rage is just bubbling underneath. I was just at the, at the store and I was talking to somebody, they got their windows tinted, they were asking me if they had a good deal. And I told him where I got my windows tinted. And I said that I didn't get my windows tinted because of the look or the style or the fashion. I got them tinted so that law enforcement cannot see my skin color when I'm driving on these roads that I help pay for with my taxes. I have a right to use or, or that I've paid for the privilege to use, if you want to look at it that way. So it's a different way of looking at life, a different way of interacting with the community, a different way of perceiving law enforcement. I keep track of how many times that I see law enforcement helping people. And since I've been driving, since I've been 16 years old, so for about half my life, for about 18 years, three times have I seen a law enforcement vehicle pulled over a law enforcement person actively helping a citizen. And I'm sure it happens more than that. But that's what I see. That's my experience. 
And because I have a vehicle, because I'm lucky enough to have a driver's license, really the only time that I expect to interact with the police is when I'm being pulled over, when I'm driving and I get pulled over. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make um, a video of, I guess, how to avoid getting murdered by the police from a motorist point of view. For, for young black men, for all black men to follow these guidelines that I'm going to put forth in this video and how you can survive an interaction with the police. So check below uh, for the link to that video that I'm going to make. There's a policeman over there hiding in the bushes in an SUV. And it's, it's fear mixed with hatred, I think. Not at the person, not at the individual. Not even at the badge per se. It's the resentment of feeling that my, my palms get sweaty, my heart skips a beat. I get nervous just at the thought, at the sight of a police vehicle. And their motto is to protect and serve, but I'm scared of them. So you can feel how you want to feel. You can say what you want to say about the issue of police brutality, violence towards particularly black suspects. You can, you can say what you want, but you can't argue with the fact that most of my people have a fear of the police. Nigga, you better bust Shit, my mama living in the cloud house I'm just hoping she can hear her baby's loud mouth Not neglected, but I'm still feeling affected To death, cause the way she left was still so unexpected What's next? I can't just say that I believed in heaven at the time Cause at the time I was so young and reckless I bet that i catch a L, nigga Burning in hell and turning for what I'd sell, nigga I'd say it's life and burn me another L, nigga She was my heart and now I'm just like a shell, nigga And so I'm gone, yeah, I'm gone till I'm on I'm telling you I'm gone, yeah, I'm gone till I'm on When well, you just think that can't nothing go right, that's when you wrong When well, you just think that can't nothing go right, that's when you wrong I swear I put my motherfucking life up in these songs And never put my pipe inside a girl unless she's strong strong, Black and beautiful, that's unusual, I know But I went to school with every type of hoe, type of hoe So I'm off it, trying to get out these streets And trying to get in that office Trying to get me some cash, my house is really a closet Trying to earn my respect, a lot of niggas that bought it Trying to show y'all I'm sick, a lot of people ain't caught it I really need a car cause this lady that I'm in love with Really loves me for me but she thinks I could be above it Thinks that I could do better and I would surely agree That I ain't doing too much but I think that I could do three I think that I could do four and I think that I could do more I know that I know the Lord before I creep in the door I hope I sleep in Dior before I sleep in the floor Fuck Everything is money, money But when you ain't making none of it then ain't nothing that's funny Fuck so these are like your dark days, brother uh -huh. Well, you ain't making parquet butter Now, when you chasing the wind Will you break it, you bend Say we gotta be good Or we're Satan is sin 
You ain't gotta be hood Don't be faking for them I came out of the hood I ain't taking it in But I'm taking my zone My whole city, I mean it I see Cali in peace You say I'm silly, I'm dreaming I see valleys and beach You say I'm silly, I'm dreaming Quarterback in this rap The captain, I'm Willie, I'm beaming Now like really, I'm beaming Fuck your still in the sky It's the spot where my sheep are sleep When I'm feeling, I'm fly Fuck your box, all my circles meet When I chill and get high Fuck your hype, all my Urkel's geek When I finally arrive Huh, huh I finally arrived. I know I'm great, but I'll be here when you finally decide. Yeah, I'm just trying to move vertical. Focus time. That's why I'm thinking convertible. Open mind. Do the do's, don't the things. Color outside the lines. The lines.